Hi, I'm uh, John from the Open Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at investment markets. Um, quite a dramatic turnaround over the last couple of weeks in the US market. First, we had comments uh, from just sort of Jay Powell, um, really sort of, uh, you know, just confirming that uh, the next move is unlikely to be up. That's pretty much ruled out any further rate hikes. Um, but it also said that, you know, inflation is, uh, while it is coming down, it isn't come down as sort of quickly as first anticipated, but uh, still looking for um, a couple of cuts towards year end. Then had a couple of encouraging uh, uh, data points. Uh, firstly, the uh, um, employment data uh, that was expected to be around sort of 230,000 jobs created came in at 175. So that clearly takes a little bit of pressure off the uh, um, sort of jobs market in terms of the inflationary pressures. But also as well, you know, potentially those sort of, you know, higher rates have started to impact on the, on the uh, labour market. And that 175 was versus uh, 315 last month. Then the latest inflation data on the CPI headline came in at plus 0.3, which was a little bit weaker than anticipated. Um, core is 3.6, again, a little bit lower than anticipated. Um, and that's really taken a little bit of pressure off uh, interest rates. Now, while that doesn't make the June meeting a live meeting for the Fed, you know, potentially now the market is looking at sort of August, September now as uh, the first sort of rate cut in the US. But obviously data dependent. Now, on the back of that uh, data and the sort of Fed comments, 10-year uh, rates have fallen dramatically. They're currently 436. Now, that's a fall of around 25 basis points over the last sort of two to three weeks. And likewise, the two year as well, that's down at 474. Now, again, a couple of weeks ago, that was above 5%. So, certainly pretty encouraging news coming out of the US uh, um, economy, you know, and potentially still looking for those rate cuts later in the year. Well, the Fed's still targeting uh, rates at sort of five and a quarter to five and a half. That's the highest uh, rates uh, for the last uh, 20 odd years. Now on the political front, uh, the hush money trial with uh, ex-President Trump uh, continues to sort of ramble on. Um, what is interesting though, is that you know, currently in the polls, it doesn't seem to be affecting his, uh, his sort of ratings. Where Biden seems to be failing at present is his handling of the, the Gaza situation. Because obviously seen quite a few demonstrations in US campuses um, read the uh, events in Gaza. Now the other conflict, obviously the Ukraine uh, war, that is over 800 days old now. Um, you know, potentially that was a, sort of, you know, a two to three week exercise for Putin just to reclaim that land. But no real signs of any sort of solution or end to the conflict. Now oil's backed off dramatically as well. That's below 80 bucks now. And that's obviously helping the sort of global inflationary pressures. Now in the UK, the local elections were disastrous uh, for the ruling uh, Conservative Party and they pretty much got slammed in virtually every seat.
And the worry is now if that was transferred into a general election, um, you know, the, uh, um, the Tories Conservative Party, they'd be lucky to get probably 150 seats. And bear in mind, they currently have over 300. But with inflation falling, you know, potentially the Bank of England could just be looking at cutting interest rates maybe as early as June. Now, if that is the case, that would give the economy certainly a little bit of a boost and potentially would give the government uh, a little bit of a boost in the polls as well. As, it, you know, if things start to look a little bit better, the economy starts to improve, people start to feel better. And that's obviously, you know, should be sort of reflected in the, uh, in the polls. Now, the EU region, uh, sort of widely expected now, the ECB will be looking at cutting interest rates in June. In fact, it would almost be a surprise if they don't. So that would be the first major sort of central bank to cut interest rates. And, you know, as discussed here before, it really would be quite ironic, really, if they were the first to cut in this, uh, in this cycle. Now in Australia, the Reserve Bank left rates on hold, no real surprise there. Again, sort of came out and said, you know, data dependent will be prepared to move if needed either way. But with inflation falling and the government running as a surplus, current surplus as well, and potentially looking like another surplus uh, in the uh, ongoing year as well, um, you know, potentially the Australian economy looks in pretty reasonable shape. So when will the RBA cut uh, the uh, cash rate from that uh, current rate of uh, 4.35? Now the New Zealand economy certainly isn't in the same sort of shape. It's really pretty dire. Um, you know, it looks like uh, you know potentially growth for this year might only be 0.5% if you're lucky. Now, obviously, the high interest rates are really, uh, you know, hurting the economy. And uh, one of the major banks came out this week and sort of had a report that, you know, potentially, although the Re Reserve Bank uh, in inflation target, we're running a little bit above that, you know, potentially they start to look at the bigger picture. And, uh, you know, the economy really does need a rate cut. So the Reserve Bank meeting next week will just be interesting. No one expects anything on rates. But it'll just be interesting to see what commentary comes. Because at present the market is looking, pricing in um, a rate cut sort of October, November of this year. But really it needs to come before that. Also as well, the budget obviously coming up towards the end of May and it's just going to be interesting really because there's not a whole lot for the government to give away. With unemployment rising, that's currently 4.3% and uh, you know, in current sort of projections, it looks like it's going to be 5% by the end of the year. So if you are looking for income options, go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles and we're looking forward to speaking to you soon.